All right, so on the class page, we click on the PDF. That kind of just shows us a preview. We don't have the download option. So we're gonna click the three dots and then do open in new window. And then from there, you should get the download arrow. And you always wanna make sure that the type down here is uh, PDF, all right? So that will give you that option and then you would just choose where it's gonna go. Okay. So once, once we download that PDF, you're gonna to go to this site, Lumen PDF. I mean, it may pop up as a, as a pop plugin, which I don't know why I had it there, but um, for some reason it's not showing up. So we just go to this site, which kind of takes you to the same place. You can sign in using your Google account. All right, uh, I guess it just bypassed that for me because I'm already maybe signed in. And then you just press the plus button um, you could have, you can add something from your drive, or we're just going to upload that file. So that's where you would go and select that. All right, and then once we click on that, you know, your final test here to get ready here is to make sure that you can click on these boxes and type those things in there, right? So that's our goal here of what we're doing. All right, so we're looking, and we're going to go kind of not necessarily in order on these things um, we're gonna try to though knock out I think this first unit here this week working in the video industry so we already talked about copyright um, there are some things there with design principles that I think we've covered I'm gonna look at that again today we're gonna look at this first lesson purpose audience and communication all right so let's take a look at the video here Hi, I'm Marie, and welcome to Learn Cube's Adobe Premiere CC 2018 course. All right, I'm going to go ahead here. The first step in any media-driven project is to determine whether the project is relevant to the purpose, audience, and audience needs. Specific questions that need to be answered include client goals. What is the vision the client has for this project? For Premiere projects, what is the specific goal if the video is to be produced? Is this a promotional video, a marketing video, a music video, a how-to video, something else? Client goals will help determine how we should film and produce said project. Next question. All right, so what's the answer for uh, letter A, I guess we would put on our form there? What's the first question that we should ask? Tyler? Yes, what are the client goals? All right, so I'm writing in on my PDF, what are the client goals? Hi, did I enter it? All right, I'll redo it, I think. All right. All right, so that would be our first question. Um, so what's the vision, right? What's their ultimate goal? Um, and that will help to shape what we're going from there. Said project. Next question. Who is the target audience? How you produce a video for outdoor activities will differ depending upon whether this is an advertisement for company products or a video trying to boost an area's tourism or something in between. Is this video for kids? Is it for young adults? Is it for middle-aged or the senior citizen age group? Is this mostly for men, women, or does it not matter? Is the target audience wide? Is it narrow? Demographics are important. We mentioned some audience qualifiers. If this video is for any kind of program, income levels and other demographics are important as well. If this project is meant to boost business, it has to draw the demographic types that tend to frequent that business, for example. And what about accessibility? Do we have audience members who, for example, are vision impaired? If so, the audio needs to tell the story of the video in a very clear and vivid way. The audio should do so anyway. But for any accessibility issues, this becomes even more important. For Premiere, one has to consider the platform form to which a project will be published. Is this going to be on YouTube? There are settings we can use for that and we will see those later. Is this going on TV? 
is this just going to be on a website or inside of an app? The medium to which this will be distributed can affect your settings. The main takeaway, all of these points are as important as they will determine how you plan, structure, and produce a video-based project. And getting these questions answered well will help us in the next piece of the project, the design plan. All right, so if you simplify and just have these as your, um, your questions, even though there's five and there's only four spaces, all right, so we talk about demographics as um, as being a third one, which is basically kind of the same thing as audience, right? So let's kind of, I think for C, let's put accessibility. Now they talk about a lot of this stuff and maybe we don't necessarily have to think about accessibility on some of our small projects. But this is all kind of, you know, with the intention that you're going to work on some bigger projects and get involved with more video production. And remember this, you know, all this stuff, we're trying to get our Adobe certification in Premiere. So having this uh, experience in um, different production skills is, is going to help you out in that way to, to prepare for the test that we have. All right. So that's number one. All right. Number two, it says answer the four questions for a personal project you would like to work on. All right, so if we're doing a slideshow, all right, we think about that being our first project here. You know, what will we talk about as far as being, uh, answering those questions, all right? What are the goals, all right? So for our, our slideshow, we're going to to make a video. I'll get my grammar there, which includes pictures that change to the beat of music. All right, so that's what we're going to talk about. That's our goal there. All right, our audience would probably be, you know, students, maybe teachers, family, friends, right? Hopefully you're going to be excited about this. You might say that that's kind of everybody, but... You know, we kind of think that that wouldn't necessarily be like maybe a professional organization, right? Or we wouldn't say this is o overly conservative, right? It's pretty flexible in that and should be kind of like friendly with that. Um, our accessibility, um, you know, they talk about that. Let's see, actually, I'm going to go back here and see if they expanded upon that. So I don't think we really have to worry about that so much with this um, because there's really going to be no voice in it. You know, if there's audio, all right, that we have in there, that would be something that would be really important that people could have some kind of captions that would go along with that. But, you know, if you're vision impaired, I don't know if there's anything we can do to, um, to kind of add any captions and things to that. So maybe we'll just say for this one, not applicable, applicable. So we'll say NA. And our platform, all right, if we think about that, settings will differ on the intended platform and delivery medium. And there we go, right? That's what I was going to say. We will be certainly uh, distributing this on YouTube and websites, all right? So you will end up putting this on your website. So we'll say the platform is YouTube and personal website. All right, we're going to talk about building that today. All right, so that's our first page here. All right, so some simple answers there that we have. And then I think we can move on to this other one. Yeah, so we're, we are going to talk about these different things, these steps for um, or phases of production. And even though we're not going to be working necessarily on a lot of them for this project, 
there will be some that are going to happen here. And um, so I think that's good to, to learn about. All right, so let me hide this and we'll go on to our different phases. The next group of topics to cover involve the stages of production, specifically pre-production, production, and post-production. There are several aspects of each you need to know about for the exam. For the exam, make sure you know which aspect of production fits in the pre-production, production, and post-production categories. In pre-production, three aspects make up a design plan. Let's look at an example of each. Shot list. This needs to contain camera shots, where they are located, and the number of cameras used for each shot. That is, if you are using more than one camera. You'll want to come up with a good logical way to order and organize these shots. In this example, this shot list is organized by camera and location, as filming is taking place in several locations for this video. Many shot lists will also have one or more description columns that could contain information such as props needed or similar information. Shot lists can vary based on projects. Make the shot list work for you. Script. This should contain any dialogue included in the video. All right, let me, this I'll pull that up, all right? So that first question there, that we're asking about Megan? What's not? All right, so this shot list would be for a pretty, you know, extensive production. It has 18 shots, so, or you can think of those as scenes also, or just maybe different camera angles. We'll talk about what these things are, but location, EXT would be like exterior. The type of shot, we'll look at some camera angles, long shot, wide shot, medium shot, camera uh, angles and movements. Talking about audio, VO would be voiceover. Um, NATs, I don't know if that's like a natural sound. And then a little description, props and cast. All right, so really putting all the, thinking about all the aspects uh, because the more preparation you do, the better it's, the easier and the, the, the more efficient you'll be with your time in the actual production. All right, so um, that stuff is important, especially with bigger types of uh, shots that we have. All right, so we'll move ahead here to the script. I think that's the next thing here. Script. This should contain any dialogue included in the video. This includes both narration and live dialogue, whether that is from a single person or back and forth among multiple people. Here's an example of one. Scripts should also include locations. Storyboarding. All right, so number or letter B, the script includes any dialogue included in the video. All right, and they had a nice format there showing how to organize that. All right, so hopefully you got that answer on there. We'll kind of come back. This provides a visual representation of the video timeline through having sketches of each shot. This is a good way for a team to communicate and collaborate on how each shot should look and how each shot should be set up and convey the ideas of the director or producer for the cinematographer and talents. Location scouting. This all right, what was the storyboard? Anybody? All right. Uh, visual representation of the video in the timeline. All right, so look, little thumbnails, right? So we can really help to see it and imagine it. It's hard to imagine sometimes in words. If we just had that shot list, it may be difficult to really imagine how those things are going to appear. So the storyboard is a much more visual way to see that. This is a matter of going to each location to look over factors that will affect the shoot. Is the location available for filming? How is the lighting? Is one time of day better than another? How is the sound? Will there be a lot of background noise? Do we want a little background noise? How about parking, power capabilities, and the contact for the location? This form is an example of what to look for when scouting a location. If you are filming near a water stream, you may want that sound. If you are filming in a studio, the water stream outside will probably be annoying. 
These are all factors to consider when scouting out locations for golf. All right, so scouting is visiting each location to look over factors that will affect the shot. Shoot. The act of shooting is not, you know, sometimes we, we that's like a bad word to use in school, but, um, you know, when we're filming, it's called a shot, all right? You're taking a shot with the camera. It's a, a little frame, basically. All right, so all those things that talked about, and audio is a big thing, all right? That's one of the more, I think, sometimes more challenging. You need uh, microphones that can kind of isolate and really get, uh, eliminate background noise. All right, so we will be talking about different ways of capturing sound. All right, I think they're just gonna kind of sum it up here. We covered pre-production. Now let's move into what entails the next phase, production. There are three basic aspects to this. First, setup. This is just a matter of setting up the cameras, the mics, the lighting, the props, anything else needed for each scene. Filming. This is pretty self-explanatory. Of course, you will want to make sure more than enough footage is captured so that you can edit what has been filmed down to the best of the best. All good takes should have some pre-roll and post-roll to make editors' jobs easier. During the actual filming, whoever is managing the shot list needs to take copious notes over what goes well during the shoot but more importantly, what needs to be edited out. Everything should be logged precisely to make sure that editors know where to start cutting when it comes time to edit. Wrap. The end of the production phase. The filming is complete, the sets are taken down, the equipment is put back, people involved in just the filming aspect of the video are released from their commitments, and it is on to the next phase, post-production. The third phase of production is post-production. This is the phase in which the project all comes together. I'm going to go through the pieces of this in Premiere. All right, let's go back and just make sure before we go on there. So the three aspects of production, as they mentioned here, are setup, you know, setting up all your equipment, then the actual filming, and what they call wrap. All right, so kind of taking it down, packing it up. All right. If you haven't really thought about it, video equipment is rather can be rather expensive and having elaborate sets and things like that. So we uh, and a lot of times people actually rent equipment. Um, video production uh, people are, don't have all the equipment, especially for like multi camera shoots. Um, we will have uh, a guest speaker come in who's a, a local video production uh, professional and talking about how he creates commercials and some of his projects and things like that. I think it gives us some good perspective on things and we can kind of talk about some of this stuff. All right, so set up, filming, and wrap is the, uh, the basic aspects of production. Do not worry about the details at this point as we will show you in detail how to get these tasks done later. I have Premiere open and I'm just going to briefly show you where the five steps of the post-production process fit into Premiere. First, we have importing. Importing is a process of pulling raw video into an editing suite. In Premiere, these files will be located in the project panel. Secondly, we edit the project. This is the process of cutting what is not needed and then adding effects, color correction, audio, titles, and other graphics as needed. In Premiere, this is done mainly in the source and program monitors and in the timeline panel. Color correction and scoring are considered part of editing, but they are two of the five steps of the post-production process. Color correction is the gamut of fixing whites, tones, hues, saturation, and colors in general. Scoring is the process of adding composed music to the project. This is traditionally done after other sound has been added as not to have the score conflict with any other audio in the project. The last step in post-production, exporting. There is a whole domain on this later, but I am just going to take this project in progress and then click File, Export, Media. Here, we determine the settings we want to use 
including the codec, whether to export just audio or just video or both. And down here, we have other settings we can configure. I'll just take the defaults for now and click export. For the exam, it is most important to remember the five steps of post-production. Importing, editing, color correction, scoring, and exporting. All right. So that is our little kind of talk about audience and preparing video, starting to get our minds in the kind of the frame set of working for video, which we'll be shifting to next. All right, so that last question F, the five steps are importing, you're bringing all those files in, you're editing, so you'll be trimming clips, maybe, um, you know, speeding up or slowing them down, all kinds of stuff with that. Color correction, I think is self-explanatory. All right, trying to get a nice range of contrast and value and vibrance of your colors. Uh, scoring, which is all to do with audio. All right, if you hear about a score, that does deal with audio. And then exporting, all right, turning it into a file that we can upload to YouTube. All right, because your Premiere file itself, kind of you think about a, if, if we think about our Illustrator file or our Photoshop file, those are the native file formats. They are not rendered, as they say. They're not turned into a viewer type of uh, like a JPEG, right? We, when we post images online, we always want a JPEG, all right? Kind of similar in Premiere. We want to make like an MP4 or an AVI. Those are all types of extensions that would be viewable on other devices or uploadable to YouTube. All right, so that is uh, this kind of this early part here. All right, so we have our our questions for our audience and then thinking about this project that we're working on next thinking about how that applies to that and then you know we could kind of I mean I guess technically we could go through these uh, pre-production processes um, for our our slideshow if we're really going out and putting some thought into you know making a promotional video maybe for like a park or a school or some kind of company we could go through all these processes um, and I will say for your slideshow, it doesn't just have to be still images. If you have little video segments, um, that would be certainly good too. And, and I'll show you some examples of those also um, as we look and, and get into the planning. Nick? Public places you don't technically. It's always good to, you know, if it is a, a business or something like that, you know, you would want to ask. County parks and things like that. I mean, you typically don't have to if, you know, it comes down to, you know, especially for what we're doing for educational use. But if you wanted to have like a video monetized, then maybe that would be a good safeguard to, to just have somebody fill that out. You know, it never hurts to do that. All right, so with these answered, so now to submit this to me, what you're gonna do is um, you can either download this or what I think is probably better to kind of organize this is if you press the upload arrow because it does have a button here to share and ideally that's what we would do to make life easy but uh, we've done this in the past and it doesn't seem to really go through. So I'm gonna tell you to press the upload arrow and select Google Drive. All right, so we're gonna sync this to our drive. All right, and then so let's see if I can find it. From your Google Drive, I want you to share it with me. All right, so if I go, I'm just opening another tab. I'm going to my drive. Here it is right here at the top. It goes into my recents. And then from here, so it's got all my answers. Actually, I don't really need to open it even. Um, I can right click it and share and you would just put in my address. All right, so J-D-U-S, it should pop up um, at ocbts.org. All right, so if anybody needs any repeats on answers, I will fill you in for a second, but otherwise I should be seeing everybody is sharing that with me. I can kind of just do a little check here. So, all right, so I already have it from Deanna and Jade and 
hopefully everybody else coming in shortly after that. All right, so Tyler? So you're, if you're still in the Lumen editor, you're gonna press the upload arrow, right? And we're gonna send it to our Google Drive. We sync it. And then in the drive, you should see it. If you click on my drive, like up in your quick access, and then you can just right click it and share. And this is my address here, okay? All right, so that's one of your first uh, objectives or assignments for today getting that background information on your audiences and thinking about the production phases for uh, video production. All right, any questions before we move on? All right, if you don't speak up, I assume that you guys are with this and, you, I, and I would, will be expecting to get your, your document turned in for your grade today, all right? You guys have to speak up, it's okay. I mean, I'm gonna be a little upset if you're telling me to answer all the questions, because then that, I'm like, well, what were you listening to the whole time? But um, I understand things happen and, and I don't hold grudges and I don't wanna leave anybody kind of in the, in the dust here, as they say, all right? But if there are no questions, I'm gonna move on. All right, going once, twice. All right, I will expect to see everybody's answers in there. All right, so next thing we're going to talk about then is a little bit more with audience, but now kind of gearing also to some kind of website design. All right, so we're going to take a look at this website and we're going to fill in this form here. All right, so if you could all click on this link, it will open up this form that says website color schemes. All right, and we're going to go through and fill this out together. All right, so I'll click on this. So choosing color schemes, you know, as we talk about being designers is important. You don't wanna just kind of randomly pick things or, I mean, I guess you can have your personal favorite colors, but I, I want you to think about maybe having a little more purpose to them. So I found this site um, and I thought it had some good kind of suggestions. It's not super long. You know, it's going to uh, really talk about these color schemes and um, give you some kind of insight on there. All right, so as it says, creating a website color scheme is important and exciting aspect to a web design. Color is a key component of your business's branding and also helps communicate important messages to your users as they impact or interact with your site. Because of this color selection is something that should always be carefully planned. Um, so there's a lot of aspects here um, as it says here, you know, how to think about your brand, identifying target market, color psychology, which I think is what I'm going to talk about a little bit today to really kind of get into that, how to choose color schemes, tools for choosing color palettes, and then how to apply them. All right. So if you don't remember um, some of our basic colors, let's see here. Um, these are some of the trends in color. We're not going to be able to do a lot of these things like uh, Google Sites is kind of limited, but um, maybe if you did plan on going ahead and maybe dealing more with web design, these would be some things that maybe you want to kind of think about. Abstract illustration, so it's not really, you know, uh, it's more implied. Geometric designs, having big, these big kind of um, shapes that kind of take up a big amount of your space minimalism right there's not a lot happening in the site it's just kind of the focus on one thing that's kind of minimalism 3d right we talk about having form all right so that's kind of another trend that they're talking about um, accessibility remember we talked about that with with video so um, um, being able to be adaptable to people with impairments um, whether it's text that comes up uh, as you hover over things, or we talk about metadata, I know this is getting kind of technical, but that is something that's kind of um, important if you're definitely doing this as a profession. Immersive experiences, so interaction and things like that. Dark themes, right? So very dark colors or vibrant. So these are all trends that, you know, you can see, and I'm not going to spend too much more time on that. I think I've spent enough. Um, identifying our market and but here's what I want to work on all right so actually I think I went out of order here I'll go in order of our site all right 
So the first question on your form, um, this is where the use, so we have primary, secondary, and neutral, or additional colors, right? We talked about um, in the, probably, I think when we did our design elements and principles, our primary colors, who remembers what those are? Red, yellow, blue, Red, yellow, blue. good, all right? So, and they're saying that those, this is where the user's attention goes, and so we want to use these in your call to action. So click here, press this button to buy. Those things should be using your primary colors. All right, the really, really important stuff. All right, so that first question, right, that should be our primary color, right? If we're looking at, so we're, we're applying this to here just to kind of make sure you guys are listening, right? Our, our attention should be going onto our primary color. All right, so we're working on this Google form now that I put together just to kind of organize this information. Um, secondary colors, we get by mixing two primary colors. Uh, so what would be an example of a primary? What do we get when we mix yellow and blue? Green, all right? Yellow and red. Orange, and then purple is blue and red, right? Had to think about that for a second, all right? So those are less important elements um, like secondary action buttons, less important text, anything that doesn't need immediate attention. All right, so we're talking this one would be our secondary color. And then our last one, um, backgrounds. Anything else doesn't need com to uh, compete for attention. So we're, that would be our neutrals, all right? So, you know, you're kind of lighter and maybe your values, right? So you could take shades of some of those other colors, which I like to do a lot, and make those as your backgrounds. All right. Then, psychologically, there are impacts of these colors, all right? So uh, on your form, you have matching, all right? So you have to match the term with the, um, the description of that, right? So let's see. Mackenzie, what is red associated with? All right, good. So red would be this one, right? A bold color, urgency, right? We really want to draw attention. That's a very, you know, you want to be careful using that one. Um, Austin, what do we say about orange? What does that color evoke? Orange, cheerful, confident. Okay. And what does it convey? It conveys the idea of enthusiasm. All right, and it can, however, come off as the color of caution also, right? So maybe you don't think about these things, but sub, uh, subconsciously, these are what's associated with that. All right, um, Tyler, what about yellow? What does that do? Okay, so I guess if it's a, probably I would think a lighter yellow, it maybe strains your eye because you're trying to focus to really kind of see it. It's like fading out probably, I think is what they're saying there. All right, um, j Row, what about green? What's that do? Green represents growth in nature. It also signifies health, serenity, and tranquility, and it's also associated with wealth. Okay, right, because money is green, right? So it can have something to do with that. And we see green grass, right? So I think, you know, that's pretty, um, I think, recognizable or that makes sense there, right? Health, right, serenity. We think about our color schemes. That's a cool color, right? If we were to look at some of those color schemes, um, it's kind of more soothing, similar to blue, all right? Which, Nick, what is that? What are we saying about blue? Okay, all right. So you should be matching those terms on the form as we're going. Um, which, and then Marquise, what about turquoise? What does that do? What are they saying about that? Uh, associated with healing? With healing, right? And it's kind of sophistication, right? So if you wanted to have, you know, maybe a more high class type of 
association with your company, maybe use something like turquoise, they're saying related to that. Um, Maggie, what about brown? All right, like trees, right? We think about that like a park, think of like a park ranger, their outfits and things like that, right? All these things, it, and it's interesting, I think, is that they kind of are associations that we make with, with other items, right? And kind of these iconic types of things that have these colors. Um, Kaylee, what about black? What does that do? about now? No, I just don't know what that's <laughs> oh, Sophisticated. A sophisticated feeling. It's often what we think of with sleek brands because of its, uh, I can't. <laughs> Exclusivity. Yeah, that is a, t kind of a tongue twister there. And mystery. Okay, good. Yes, yeah, so black is dark and mysterious. We can't quite make out what's going on with that, right? Um, so that would be an effect of that. Uh, Megan, what about gray? Okay, so it's kind of like neutral, but maybe that is still secure with that. And lastly, Paige, what about white? All right, we'll try Jenna. What does white do? Provides a or neutral feeling. It's a key color because it adds the green. Okay. All right. So whether you have planning your colors, you know, that this might be kind of giving you some kind of, you know, I guess support, right? Think about what kind of feeling you want your brand or your site, you know, and that's what we're going to be talking about is your website. What kind of feeling do you want people to get from it? Do you want it to be mysterious? Do you want it to be earthy and feeling of wealth? You know, those are questions you should be asking um, and hopefully or building that into your site uh, with some simple colors. All right, um, they do have some kind of cool tools on here. I was playing around with some of these links on here. So they have some color schemes, I think. I was using this one. This one's kind of cool in that you, uh, yeah, I'm going to skip through this stuff. Start the generator, all right? So what you do is you pick one color. So like if you like this one, you can view shades of it. If there's a real certain color, and, and maybe what you would do is go into your logo. And remember we talked about, what did we call this color code? Anybody remember what it was called? Think about the amount of digits. There are six. Hexadecimal, all right? So we can take these codes uh, from, or from Illustrator. You can look in your logo. If there's one color you really like, you know, look up that color code by looking through the picker. And then you can come into here and you can input that into here. So which actually, so maybe you like that one. All right, or actually, would there be another way? Copy hex. There's got to be a way, I would think, with this one, and I didn't, I'm just kind of thinking about that as we're going, that you should be able to put in that hexadecimal value, and then you could then, because uh, what you do is you could like lock that in, and then if you press the space bar, it kind of finds some color schemes that would go with that. All right, so or maybe we could lock two of them and it's going to vary some other ones. So I thought that was kind of cool, just kind of looking at some color palettes. Um, I didn't play around one of, I think a couple of these didn't work or they were blocked. But all right, so this one, um, all right, there you go. So here's, maybe this is what I was looking at more. You could put in your hexa code, hexadecimal code in there. And then let's see if it, Oh, there we go. So actually, and this is interesting because they have their color schemes here. This would be called, I think it's, yeah, adjacent colors. We look at this one. This is like a split triad. Uh, this would be four and uh, monochromatic. All right, so we haven't really talked about these color schemes a ton, but those are ways that you can get colors that 
visually look good with each other. All right, so some resources there if you really want to kind of dig into that a little deeper that I think will help you. Um, I'm not going to go through and fill out all, well, actually, am I going to have to? Uh, I think it's just, I don't know if your ordering is uh, the same as mine. And I don't know if mine are necessarily correct here, but I'm going to go to the next section here, right? So now we know some information about color schemes. Um, now we're going to think about our own business, all right? So we've moved on to section two of the form, and we're going to think about making this website for you know your company basically, or and that you can kind of look at this in two ways, right? As we're making our websites, I mean. Typically, it's just a portfolio, but maybe you want to start to really shape this that it could really be uh, um, an advertisement for your own company, right? So, like Maggie Makes, right? You could have a whole website that's kind of built around that, and you really start branding this. So, it's not really just a portfolio, but it can then be uh, a promotional thing for your company, all right? So, what is your company going to do, all right? Um, I put in here just kind of generically. All right, and you can copy my answers or if you want to change it a little bit onto yours. Um, but I think this is, my idea is that this gets you in the mindset of making this website for a purpose. All right, so you could say um, your business does video production, animation, digital art. That's what my site will be demonstrating, all right? And um, you know, while I'm doing this, let's pull it up. So we'll kind of look at these different things here. Actually, you know what, I'm gonna kind of come back. I'm not gonna go on my tangents that I usually do here. Uh, the goals for this project is going to be display art and possibly get hired or get accepted to a college, all right? That's the way you should be looking at this not just as a project that's you know required to do but hopefully you're going to use this uh, for some some real purposes all right so we're going to be making uh, displaying our art so then we kind of can either get hired to a job or get accepted into a college our target audience potential clients We would have admissions reps, right? That's, that's who might be looking at this. And maybe friends and family, right? So maybe you just want to kind of show them what you're doing. Specific features. All right, we're going to have examples. That's a big thing, right? People want to see what you're doing. Examples of work. The objectives, all right? Each project is going to have what the objective was. You want people to know what you were trying to do. Uh, and then we're gonna mention software so that they understand that you know the, you know, you're using industry software and tools used. All right, so examples of work, the objectives of the project, the software used and the tools used. Oh, I gotta go back. I was, this is one thing how do we avoid failure? I think this was something that I skipped over on here, which I think I wanted to see how we could work that into this. So is that on here? All right, so let's see if I can find that section here. Trends, abstract, no, let's, uh, let me go back. So it says knowing your client's dislikes is equally important. Removing something integrated into a website once you're halfway through a project is just as annoying, expensive, and time-consuming. Um, asking them to show your least favorite websites and point out design features. Uh, so talking about what they don't like. Uh, this way we can strike out potential failures. All right, so maybe identifying, I think with that then, to avoid failure, identifying bad design. So what would be maybe an example of bad design? We talk about colors. Well, complementary. So you're saying that complementary colors are always bad to use? 
not all the time, right? Usually they're good because they create contrast. We talk about complementary, they're opposite on the color wheel. All right, Tyler? Um, colors that don't create contrast. Colors that what? That don't create contrast. Okay. So, or maybe, yeah, so we could say um, non complementing colors. Maybe we could say too many fonts. That's something that we really aren't talking about in this. All right, so we have a ton of fonts. Um, poor organization, right? If we have things that are kind of all over and you know not symmetrical, or not balanced. Let's just say that, unbalanced. All right, that's something that I think is definitely identifiable and um, I think we can probably all agree if something is unbalanced, then um, it has, it kind of creates visual kind of stress a little bit there. All right. Um, our main competitors would just be other artists, right? If you haven't realized, the uh, graphic arts can be somewhat competitive, right? So you have to make sure that you're um, demonstrating that you're capable and uh, well versed in different things and going to be kind of different and be a benefit. Uh, what makes you different? So maybe we talk about you know organization and use of design principles. So that's where we're trying to bring this stuff and apply it to make a very visually pleasing presentation of our work. And lastly, the scope. Short term would be just till the end of the year. So maybe you're just saying, I really don't like this. I don't think I need it, but I have to get this done to get a good grade. But long term, it should be kind of like a resume, right? It's going to be always a living type of document. You're always going to be updating your portfolio. So I'm going to say long term is throughout your whole career. Right, if you're going to be a graphic artist in any capacity, you should always be updating your portfolio so that people can see the amount of time and things that you have done. All right, um, so anybody need any repeats on any of these? All right, I would like you to use this slider on the bottom, send yourself a copy, and then submit, all right? Because then that way we can think about if what that does is obviously it show, sends you all your answers, and um, you know maybe we have this as a, like a little quiz question. Maybe I'll throw something in this, even though I don't think we're going to do one this Friday because we've been kind of doing a bunch of stuff here. Uh, but so just submit that. All right. I know I have to grade all the uh, the fill in ones, but you should. Uh, let's see. Does it give you a score otherwise? Yeah, so you're probably just going to get a three. Oh, I got all these wrong. Awesome. I guess I wasn't paying attention there. So now we're going to start creating a, a website for your portfolio, right? So we're going to go to sites.google.com. Uh, it may ask you to go to the, there was an older version, but it may say go to new. All right. Um, so when you open up, you'll have some templates on the top. Let me just kind of show you, here was our portfolio or the one that I've been working on probably for like the last year. I used to use something called Blogger to make sites which allowed you to add, um, have a little more control. All right, Google Sites is, is very user friendly. Um, so it's, it's easy to use, but it's going to be kind of lacking a lot of sophistication and a little more control. And that's always going to be uh, your trade-off. We saw that with ClipChamp and things like that, right? Um, it's very use easy to use, but it doesn't have a lot of control if you really want kind of uh, really specific things that you want to do. All right, so just kind of looking at it, our, we're going to have a home page. And I don't know why I have this on here. Um, you have a header, as this is called. You have text, which would be our body. We have footer information and stuff like that. But basically, you're going to have uh, a home page, which would be a little bit of kind of a biography about you. All right. And then 
we're going to have different pages for kind of the different segments of what we're doing in class. So in video production, we'll be putting in our YouTube videos, and that's probably what we can kind of start working on today, and our digital art page. All right, I think we can start working on those today, all right, because we have our stickers, we have our Valentine window clings, and then we will have our logos that are going to go in there. All right, so coming back to the beginning, all right, so what I'd like everybody to do is to just uh, click on where it says the plus to do a blank site. And you can name this, uh, if you want to use your company logo name, that's fine. Or if you just want to do like I had there, um, you know, like, what did I say? OCBTS multimedia or, yeah, you can do something like that. Um, I'm flexible on what you're going to choose there for your, your site name. All right, so you can pick that out. I'll just say, I'm going to use my company name. I'll make a new site here. All right, um, you do have a header. So this, this information up here is called the header. Um, you can make it really big. You can make it a little bit smaller or getting smaller and smaller or just the title. All right, I kind of like the large or the banner. And then from there, you can click on change image and you can pick things from your Google Drive or you know, they have galleries of, of images here. You can go to by URL, you can search. So if there's a type of image that you want, um, you can do something like that, which I wonder if I can put in like a GIF. Because um, it is cool to have animations up there. I think I've seen certain things like that. Uh, I don't know if that's really picking that up though. I think I tried that with something in the past and like it didn't necessarily work. But you can go to your photos, albums. Um, you can go to Google Drive. There's all kinds of places, all right? Um, I would like you to have some kind of image in your header today just to kind of show that you have used that. Oh, I like that picture. This was uh, a month ago or so. Uh, in Brick, you can get a pass to drive your car on the beach for like 30 bucks for, from October to May which is, it's pretty cool. I, I actually got this little picnic table at a garage sale, so it folds up flat, and we went out and had a little picnic out there one day on the beach. All right, so um, I would like you to have your company name, have an image in the header, and you do want to title your site, all right? So up on the top here, you know, we talk about file organization, so I'm gonna just put this in there, my company name, which I actually do have a full site I paid for um, a domain registration, all right? And uh, it's basically how websites work. You have to pay a fee to register the name of it. You know, you have to do a search. Obviously, nobody else can be using it. Um, so you pay one fee, and I think I'm paying like $30 a year to own that domain, which um, I can go here and you, I'll just kind of show you guys. So not to really be bragging or anything because I really don't generate too much business for my website. <laughs> but um, this is using another kind of online site editor called, uh, I think I'm using Wix for this, as you can see up at the top. Um, you do have to pay for different plans. But um, so my domain, this site, my address is registered and then it points to basically the site that I made. So I kind of did similar things here. All right, and have some information, you know. Uh, you can do a lot of this stuff in Google Sites, but Wix um, is a paid, uh, has actually, I think they have a free version, but some of the features are paid. You can do a little bit more with it. All right, but that's kind of just talking about, so where I started, you have to pay for the domain, the name of your site, and then typically you have to pay for some kind of service to host your files. Um, in web design, we used to use uh, Adobe programs like Dreamweaver and th things like that, uh, but and then you'd have to upload your files to a server, and then when somebody types in the address, it's accessing that stuff in the server. 
So now it's a lot easier. Everything's based in the cloud and you don't have to worry about that file management as much. But, you know, it, it all depends on how complicated and sophisticated you want to make your, your site. All right, so there's your header image, your site name. Um, talking about colors, all right, so let's kind of bring this back in. If we go over here on the top where it says themes, all right, so you have simple, you have this Aristotle, you have the diplomat. So it's really kind of adjusting some of the colors, which you have some control here. All right, we can go in here and um, choose a, a color scheme. You can click the paint bucket and you can here. So here's what we're talking about, that hexadecimal value. So if I put in my company logo in there um, and then I find a color, I could use that to be kind of the base color for our site. All right, so that's where our color schemes come in. Um, and you can do that pretty much for all of them. And you do have some choice with fonts, but as you can see, there's not a lot here, right? You get like three options. So maybe we did something like that. All right, any questions so far on creating your site, naming it, putting in a header image, or changing themes? All right, let's just talk, finishing up. Sorry, does anybody have anything there? All right. Um, all these things, that, so if we go back here, all right, so we, we talked about themes. This insert tab allows, shows you all the things that you can put in here, all right. Um, I like a lot using these layouts. So these are all like placeholders. So for this one, we would see that it has one image and a text box. On this one, we have two images and a text box. So maybe for this home page, I'm going to use that one and we're just going to say kind of about me, maybe. Let's start with that. So I'd like you to put in that text placeholder and say, you know, my name is Jeremy Duza. I'm from Brick, New Jersey. Um, my goals or actually we could say this site will contain uh, examples of multimedia art, uh, specifically video production, animation, and digital art. All right, so that would kind of be um, a kind of a little introduction and then maybe my goal is to one day be um, a famous YouTuber. I don't know. Maybe you want to be a famous or a professional video editor or producer. You know, you can fill in that with whatever your goals are. But all right. So I do want to have. Um, we can leave this box blank for now and we'll probably put a little video in there at some point. All right, but I would like you to have a little bit of about me on this page. And then, so I'm gonna kind of go through these things and I'll come circle back around if you guys need help with them. But uh, I wanna kind of get this into my video here. Yes, Megan? Mm -hmm. Let me finish these last two things here. So after you have your home page, we're going to go to our pages tab and then we're going to press the plus. So we're going to make a new page. We'll call one of them video production. You can say done. And then I'm going to make a third one for digital art. All right. And then um, so those pop up as what's called the navigation bar, all right, up here in the top. As soon as we make those pages, um, you can make them sub pages if you wanted to. So by doing that, if we right click, um, actually, for, like for this one, if we wanted to put digital art as a sub page in video production, now it's a drop down. All right, I, I want this to be a separate page. So. I don't know how to undo that really. I should. Oh, there we go. Uh, no. 
now I broke it. Add subpage, add, hide. I could do that, but then I would have to retype the names and feeling lazy. But maybe I have to do that. <laughs> what about properties? Advanced, no. Uh, I shouldn't have talked about that because probably nobody's going to do that as a sub page. Duplicate, make, hide from navigation. I guess I am going to have to delete. That stinks. All right. There's probably a way to do that. So let's just go back. So we just have video production. And we'll say digital art. All right, so all I want to do is just, uh, we'll kind of go through the process of inserting a video and a picture and then publishing, all right? Uh, you can reorder these also. Like if I wanted video production first, I'd just move it up. All right, so if I go into here uh, and then go back to my insert, I would do like a, I, I really, you know, or maybe we do one of these layouts, all right? And then we can just press the plus and it's really nice that you can link right to YouTube. And then if you click on uploaded, um, it's gonna come into here and choose that. All right, so we have my little snow commercial, all right? So that's as simple as it is to put a, a YouTube video in there, right? You just press the plus, choose YouTube, all right, and do that. So I would like you to see, have, um, uh, I guess your commercials in there. We'll talk about the text afterwards. All right, but let's just talk this last one then for digital art. Uh, again, you would insert one of the layouts, which um, I like the three, kind of gives them pretty large, but not kind of overwhelming. So for this one, I don't know if we have images in our drive, so maybe we want to just upload instead. All right, so here's where your file organization is also helpful because now we can come into our folders and digital art and I'm just gonna take my company logo and insert that into there. All right, so that's inserting a picture. Last thing to do is we wanna publish this. All right, so we can see, so now that it's published and then to get the, cause this address is, is editable, right? This is not the one you wanna share with people. If you had it, editable or shared rights, they could change your site. So you want to click the drop down and say view published site. All right, look at that. This is called a URL or uniform resource locator or commonly are talked or talked about as our, our web address or URL. All right. So this is what I want you guys all to do. Once you have your stuff in there, copy this and as a class comment here today, paste it. All right, so you have three things I'm looking for today. You have your PDF, the Google form, and now your, your Google site, which has uh, those three pages. Your home page, um, which has the about me, your video production should have one YouTube video, and your digital art page has one picture on it. Okay.